Hey, I'm Nick Hawks with Medeo Scientific, and this is a lesson in how to use the device profiles part of the Medeo Scientific ChirpStack console. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe to the channel. I'm always putting out new lessons on how to use this thing. Really excited to bring you along for the ride and let you see how to use LoRaWAN in your business or other wireless profiles, but for right now, other wireless devices protocols. For right now, we're gonna stick with LoRaWAN and device profiles in here. So if you haven't already signed up for a console account, the link is in the description, console.medioscientific.com. I've got another video on how to sign up and kind of prepare for this, but right now we're gonna go into device profile. So I've got one in here already, but before we dive into that, let's talk about what a device profile is. It's a template for what a device is, can and should do. Um, so pretty straightforward, it just makes it easier for you to create groups of devices that all do similar things. So those could be parking sensors, could be traffic counters, could be whatever it is that you're out there. We're gonna talk a little bit about the naming convention that I use to keep everything pretty organized, but that's what a device profile is. So we've got one in here that I've already set up so that we can walk through it. This is the MakerFab Soil Moisture LWS915 one hour device profile. So inside here, and this is already, everything is, is set up here, is I've got the naming convention. So this is made by MakerFabs. The device is the Soil Moisture LW uh, for LoRaWAN. It's a US915 device and it's on the one hour interval. I wrote all of those myself. That's just using my naming convention. Down in the description, you can use whatever notes are gonna be useful to you or maybe other users in your account who will use this. You're gonna set your region to whatever region you're in. I'm in the US 915 here in sunny San Diego, uh, California. And then almost the rest of these, just leave them alone. Um, you can change them if you want, you can geek out, but I would say for right now, just leave them alone. The only other thing to change, uh, and we'll talk about why in a second, is this expected uplink interval. Uh, before we do that, let's talk about what a uplink is. So an uplink is the information that's coming from the sensor. When we talk in LoRaWAN terms, we're always talking in terms of from the sensor. So an uplink is a packet sent up from the sensor and a downlink is a packet sent down from the hotspot to the sensor. What an uplink is, is just a reporting of the information the sensor has gathered. So in this case, the, the sensor is saying, hey, the pipe is leaking. That packet is sent in an uplink to a hotspot. The hotspot then transfers that packet onto this thing, to the uh, LNS to the console, um, it gets decoded, and then we see in an app like, oh my God, the pipe's leaking, maybe we get a notification. If we wanted to send something back down to the hotspot, or sorry, back down to the sensor, that would be called a downlink. Now, most devices are what's called class A devices, devices just like this thing right here, the soil moisture sensor, and a class A device is one that's just listening all the time and only occasionally sending out an uplink. So every hour, what this thing is supposed to do is send out an uplink with, hey, this is the soil moisture, this is the temperature, this is the humidity. If you put these devices in a place where they won't always be able to get their packet out, they send it every time, but sometimes it bounces off a passing car or there's atmospheric disturbance or whatever, someone walks in the way, uh, the uplink doesn't get through, there is what's called, and this is what got us on this, the expected uplink interval, which is this thing down here, this 36... 3600. So 3600 seconds is 60 minutes is one hour is we are expecting to hear from this thing every hour. I've set this thing. I said, Hey, I want you to send out to me every hour. What's going on? And it says, cool, I will do that. Um, that's, that's what I do every hour. That's what the, the time says. And we're telling console, Hey, you should expect to hear from this thing every hour. But in the case of a soil moisture sensor that you plant down in a meadow behind a rock, maybe it sends that packet every hour, but it doesn't get through. So I might set this to 7200 um, just so I don't get a warning that my device is down. 7200 is every two hours. So if I miss an hour, no big deal for me. Not super important to know absolutely every hour this thing, uh, what it's doing, but every two hours would be nice. It just makes things look a little bit nicer. So I'll leave it at 3,600 for now, but just so you know, that's what that is. Uh, we'll go through these tabs on the top next. So join OTAA is join over the air, OTAA over the air activation. Uh, class, so just leave that on, that'll be on. Class B, we're gonna skip past. Class C, we're gonna skip past. We'll talk about a Class C device a little bit later in this video, and I'll show you how to set one up in, in an entirely different video. But leave it alone for now. We'll go into the codec. The codec is the decoder that decodes that packet. Remember, the packet is all just scrambled zeros and ones. Um, and it says, hey, this is what that means. It means that the relative humidity is 72, the temperature is 89, the battery is whatever, 3.2 volts, et cetera, et cetera. And in this decoder, um, all that stuff is out there. You're looking for the data on the temperature of the board or the temperature on the sensor or the humidity, whatever it is. 
almost all devices will have a decoder that comes with them or that their manufacturer provides. I'll show you how to find that um, in just a minute. But for right now, just know that this codec, the, de the decoder is in there. The last thing to, or almost second last thing to look at on these uh, pieces here is the tags. So tags allow you to separate out a bunch of different devices that might all be in similar places. Um, the, in, the example I've got here is the location. So I've set up a uh, location tag for quadrant 2a. You might set up a location. So the key would be location and the value would be quadrant uh, 2b. So that when um, this thing fires, you can select from these tags and assign a tag to a device um, inside of this template. So that's how to do that. The last thing is measurements. Uh, one kind of fancy thing you can do in the chirp stack console and Medio scientific console is you can have the decoder display to you the values that you're seeing. So instead of 011 with 002 or you know 2A4 equals 79, whatever the crazy stuff is, it'll just say soil moisture is 72%. Now it won't do graphs, it won't do fancy stuff, it won't do a bunch of notifications, but it's a quick way to check that your decoder's working, that your device is firing. Once you've got all those the way you want them, hit submit and you've got a device profile in there. Now I'm gonna show you two more ways to add a device profile, but before I do, I'm gonna show you why you'd want to add a device profile. So we've got this thing down here. Um, we're gonna go down to applications. We're going to, we've, I've already created an application. I can create another one. Uh, we'll call this test two. And this is the second application. Hit submit, and now we've got a second application in our applications here, so that's test two. The reason that we created the device profile is that we, when we add a device, actually I'll go back to the test one because it has a, uh, a device in there. When we add a device in there and we click on the device, we go to the configuration tab and I'll do an entire uh, video on this, but I just want to show you where you're going to use these device profiles is down here. You can select from any device, device profile to say, hey, this device here should use this device profile. This is the device that I just added that all it had at first was just a device EUI is actually the soil moisture sensor. It's a LoRaWAN soil moisture sensor. It's made by Maker Fabs. It's US 915, it fires every hour, et cetera, et cetera. So that's how those things kind of get used. Let's go back to device profiles and I'll show you two ways to add a device profile to your account. Now, let's say that you are super new and you're like, yep, I'm gonna go ahead and buy that Maker Fab sensor um, and I wanted, I wanna try it out. So it's, I think it's 20 bucks to order online plus whatever the shipping is. Um, you can come in and add that uh, Maker Fab soil moisture sensor profile to this. And you'll do that by going in. So let me go a little bit slower. I know I like to talk fast. You'll go over to add device profile. And instead of filling all this stuff out and trying to go back and forth with Windows copying what I just did, go ahead and hit select device profile template. Now, the super cool thing about the Medio Scientific Console is that there are a couple templates in here and that number should be growing all the time. As I record this on June 7th of 2023, we've got two. Um, but in a couple days, we'll have three and then we'll have 10 and then, you know, 2,400, 10,000, whatever, so that you can find your device and add it without going through all of the trouble of figuring out the codec and the rest of it and doing what we're, um, what we're going to do in the last part of this video. So if you wanted to add another device, uh, let's say you don't have, you already have the maker fabs in there. Uh, you could add a Broen device. And the Broen is this little tab. These tabs come in a bunch of different styles. Some of them measure uh, movement in a place. Some of them measure indoor air quality. Some of them measure water leaks, whatever. You can just hit the Broen tabs. I'm gonna be adding a Broen tab US 915, one hour firmware version, 3.0. There's nothing else to choose. You just have to actually choose those things. And then you hit okay. And that will add in a new device profile for you where everything is already filled out. The codec is in there. You don't need to worry about any of that stuff. If we go back to device profiles, you can see, oh, that I forgot to save it. Um, so let me just add it back in there. Uh, I got ahead of myself there. But you'll see how easy it is to save these things. You'll hit submit at the end, and now you have two device profiles there. So if you want to get rid of it, you can go back into um, delete device profile copy, you have to copy this part up here and put it in and say, delete that. I didn't want it. I made a mistake, whatever. Go ahead and hit delete. And now you've just got one profile there. The last thing I want to show you in this video is how to manually add a device profile. You're going to go to add device profile. And instead of the select device profile, device profile templates, we're going to go out and fill all this stuff in. I'm going to do this for this uh, Senzamo Senstick, Senstick, which uh, measures, I want to say temperature and maybe humidity and then whether or not it's been moved. So remember our naming convention, this is the Senzamo is the manufacturer. It's a Senstick 
SMC30. Uh, we're gonna set it up for US 915 and we'll do something fancy. We'll call it a two hour interval. Now, down in the description, um, what we might do is all of these devices have a manual. They all have a website kind of devoted to telling you about them. In this case, I've got this thing pulled up already, so I'm just gonna copy and paste it in here. And that is useful if you've got a couple people in this account and maybe one of them wants to figure out how to use the device, how to make a change on the device, whatever. They just go find the manual, put that in the description. You might say, hey, this is in the, um, in the freezer. This is in the freezer in sector 14 whatever it is, uh, you'll set the uh, region. In this case, we're setting it to 915 because I wrote 915 up here. And the last thing that we're gonna set is this two hour interval. We'll change this from 3600 to 7200. So now it knows that it's uh, supposed to expect an uplink every two hours. We're not gonna mess with any of the rest of the stuff. Join OTA is automatically on. We're not doing class B, we're not doing class C. This is a class A device. We're gonna go to Kodak. Now you'll notice here that it says none. Um, that can be a little bit of a scary thing. We're gonna go down and I'm gonna choose JavaScript functions. There is already a template uh, for the codec in there. It's not the actual codec. So if you are a geeky engineer type, you can rewrite that and geek around with it. If you're not, just go ahead and delete it. And all of these devices, the manufacturer will have a codec for you. Um, in this case, since Zamo has it on their website, I'm just going to copy it and paste it into here. I'll tell you uh, up front that not all codecs work right away, so sometimes you might need a little bit of help with them. Jump into the Gristle King server, which is on Discord, and ask for help in the decoder channel, and the uh, the crew will help you out, the, the team over there will help you out. But for right now, we're gonna copy and paste this thing, this thing in, that's how it works. We've already talked about tags, we've talked about measurements, so you know all that stuff. We're gonna hit submit, and now we have this Zamo coder in there. So you've seen, uh, what a device profile is, how it fits in, how it gets used, how you can add it, the two different ways. You can either add a template in there or you can add in a, a device profile manually. That's the whole thing, that's device profile. So if you like this video, if you wanna keep learning more, please like and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Uh, it makes sure that you know when I le release a new video. I've got a whole series of videos I'm doing on this, so there's gonna be uh, I won't say hundreds of videos, but there's gonna be enough to walk you through it and be worth uh, subscribing to that so you, you see when they drop. Okay, if you need a Medio Scientific Console account, go down in the description, look for the link to that. Get a free account. They all come with uh, 400 data credits so you can get started with your first device and figure out how you're going to use LoRaWAN or any other wireless protocol in your business. We're starting with LoRaWAN. Relax, everyone. Okay, rock and roll. Have a good one. I will see you on the console. I'm out.